Hello and welcome to the 741 and Tom's Radio Room Show channels. Uh, today we're doing a joint video to talk about and demonstrate Echolink. I'm going to use my amateur radio that's behind me here and try and talk to Tom who's going to be connecting through Echolink. Uh, I'm in Connecticut and he's in Florida and this is just another way to kind of show how amateur radio operators can connect and talk to each other uh, over the airwaves and over the internet. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, this is uh, very interesting. I've used it in the past and the beauty of it, uh, you know, some people will say, well, you can just use your cell phone. But the beauty of it is you meet new people and you know they share a common interest, which is amateur radio. And so by using Echolink and going on Echolink via your computer or even a radio like Rob's going to do, you can meet new people throughout the world. I mean, these are people throughout the world. And I've done this in the past with people in Alaska, especially this time of the year when it's really cold. It's minus 41 up there in certain cities. And just talk to them, say, you know, how are you guys existing up there? And I don't, have, I don't need to know these people. I just contact them, and I know they are um, an amateur radio operator. You have to have an amateur radio license to do this. You can have the minimum license and do this. And uh, it connects you to people directly. It connects you to repeaters and then to people. That's what we're going to try. And you can connect to uh, links to other repeaters. So it's the whole service that's out there. And we're going to try to show you how it actually works. And one other thing to mention is this is, um, this is an analog mode. So I'm on an analog FM two meter radio. Um, and Tom, of course, is on his computer. Um, the internet backbone, of course, is digital. But the, the point being is that you're using this mode to connect uh, analog to sort of analog, as opposed to a mode like DMR or DSTAR, which is uh, completely a digital mode. Uh, so, okay, Tom, you want to uh, share your screen okay. and we'll take a look at the app that you've got loaded in there. Now, while you're getting that ready to go, I'll mention that there's an app for the computer that you can load. That's what Tom's going to show, but you can also get it for your cell phone. Okay, so I see your screen, Tom. What, what are we looking at here? Okay, uh, what I did is Rob gave me the call sign of the repeater he's going to be using. And so I did a search up here, and this is how you can find repeaters. You can find people if you know their call sign. Just go up here and do a find. So I did a find of that repeater, which is right down here at the bottom of the screen in Lebanon, uh, Connecticut. And I double clicked on that, and so now I am connected. So I can hear anybody that gets on that repeater. And so if Rob gets on the repeater with his radio, I should be able to hear him. Okay, so I can turn the volume up on the radio here and I'll throw my call sign out. This is N1NUG listening. Okay, I don't know if you caught it, but down here, there's a, a audio bar that when he was talking, it was showing his level right here. Go ahead, Rob, do it again and I'll keep my cursor down here. Okay, this is N1, NUG, testing. So I, I could uh, visually see his transmission and I could hear it. Also over here, which is a little bit covered up by our videos, you can actually text instead of using audio. So you can, you can type in text, which will appear up here behind these two screens showing our video. So I'm going to try to contact Rob now. Well, all I do is hit the space bar, KE4GSK, KE4GSK. Oh, okay, I got ahead of myself. Hey, okay, now I'm transmitting. KE4GSK transmitting. And you could, let me stop it. You could see the, the, the word, the, Symbol TX for transmit, and then you could see the level of my transmission while I was transmitting. <laughs> yeah, and I heard you come through the repeater. I turned the volume down a little bit so it didn't mess up the 
the video here, but I was able to hear you. Um, so we could, you know, kind of communicate and carry on a, a conversation if we wanted to with this mode. Um, the audio quality with Echolink isn't, you know, as superior as radio to radio, but it's certainly usable. Um, and like I said, the, uh, the beauty of it is you can meet new people uh, that you know share your amateur radio interests. Yeah, it's a great way. Um, we actually use this here in New England, um, in Connecticut in particular. We have uh, skywarn nets that take place, especially when there's a storm, and in particular like a snowstorm that, that comes in. And the National Weather Service office is, um, I don't know, 100 or so miles away. So it's a little bit out of the um, range of the, the repeater. So what they do is their representative will connect in through Echolink and listen to the Skywarn net in real time and take down all the information that they want from the Skywarn net. So like snow totals, wind speed, um, you know, damage reports, things like that. So it, it's actually a useful uh, technology that, that we use here quite a bit. And there's, there's lots of options that we won't go over today, but there's lots of options you can um, like I could look up uh, Rob's call sign and then I could save it in, under alarms. And then if I've got Echo Leak running in background, say, um, it will give me alarm when that person is on the air. So oh, like, interesting. So like, for instance, I've got this alarm for the network and you can actually have a network. This one in Alaska uh, can have 25 people connected at the same time. And this is the one that I used to listen to and listen to those people talking about weather and things up there and about their, the snow knocking their antennas down and stuff like that. The next one down here is our local repeater here in Clearwater, Florida. And uh, so I can have those alarms to go off when somebody is using those particular stations um, also you can have a list of favorites you can also click up here and this will blow your mind click up on here on locations and here's all the locations that are connected to echo link like in africa there's 21 north america, america there's almost 3,000 connections 3,000 people you can or links you can connect to so if i click on that here's different parts of North America, here's United States, it has 2,400. That's right at this given moment. Now that number will go up and down as people or repeaters go off the echo, air, the echo link. And then here's area, so you can pick an area, and this is laid out by the uh, current country itself, the United States country itself. So I think I'm in area four, um, yeah, so here's like, these are all the connections and people that could be on Echolink. Interesting. So you, you can meet a lot of people and you can go and look through this and go like, oh, there's a guy that's in Clearwater, Florida, and I don't even know him. And you can connect to him and uh, talk to him and say, uh, you know, how are you? I'm Tom Stiles. Um, what kind of equipment you got? Uh, what kind of antennas? and basically a way of meeting people. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely an interesting thing. I've, I've played with it a little in the past. I haven't explored it to this level, and I've really only used it on my cell phone. I didn't realize there were so many options that you could use with the desktop app. So that's something I'm going to have to look at. Um, especially I like that alarm function so you can program in, you know, certain call signs or repeaters. So, if, you know, for instance, if uh, if I wanted to talk to you, I could I could program your call sign in, and I'd get an alert when you were on the air, or vice versa. So I, I like that feature. Okay, so there you have it. There's kind of Echo Link in a nutshell. Um, thanks to Tom, we were able to kind of do a little test. Tom Tom was able to give us a nice explanation of of kind of how it works and and how he uses it for his needs, and you kind of saw how I was able to use it here with an analog radio and, and kind of talk to him. Um, we wouldn't really have any other reliable way to communicate with each other on the ham radio. 
uh, if it weren't for Echolink or, or something like DMR or, or something like that. If we were relying on HF, uh, we may not have propagation always between Connecticut and Florida. So this is a good way to, uh, to kind of communicate uh, radio to radio or amateur radio to amateur radio. So having said all that, um, any final thoughts, Tom? No, I, I think we're good. I am uh, totally amazed you got this working so that we could do the recording and echo link. And I definitely appreciate that. Well, thanks for uh, joining me here today, Tom. It's always fun to kind of do a joint video. Um, so like you said earlier, hopefully we can do uh, more of these in the future. It looks like we've got kind of a way to do it here. So I guess, I guess with that, we can wrap it up. So 7-3 to all the hams out there. And uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to learn more about either of our channels, check the link uh, in the description below to, uh, to our respective channels. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays. <laughs>